One of the joys of bushcraft is that the skills go where we go. They truly are international. Having travelled the rest of the world in this series, I thought it would be nice to finish here at home. In this programme, I want to explore Britain through a bushcraft perspective. One of the things that makes this such an interesting country to study bushcraft in is our ever-changing seasons, because as they change, so does the bushcraft. It's a spectacular and unsung story where looks can be deceptive. In early March, British woodland can seem cold and uninviting with very little going on. But in fact, when you look closely, you discover that Mother Nature's plans are already well advanced. Right now inside these tiny buds, birch leaves are poised, waiting to happen. All they need is one last surge of energy, which they get from the sap beneath the bark. At this time of year, it really pumps up through the tree for just two or three weeks in the year. And that is the ultimate sign the spring has actually arrived. But this is just the start of the birch tree's talents. The bark provides great tinder for starting fires all year round. The wood is good for carving, a great summer pastime. And in the autumn, the trunk hosts the birch polypore, a fungus that helps sharpen your knife and makes good plasters. And that, for me, is the magic of bushcraft. Once you look beyond the obvious, even the most common things in our countryside take on a new importance and value. No matter where you live in these islands, British bushcraft has something to offer. It's what inspired me to this profession nearly 30 years ago, and it's why I still live here today. So let's start this journey down south in March, early spring. I can't think of any better way to allow the seasons into your life than to come outdoors and camp out amongst the animals and the wildlife itself. Tarps are incredibly versatile. You can set them up in hundreds of ways. What I've done today, though, is I've set this up with one side sloping down and one side open to favour the fire. Where you site your camp makes the difference between a good night's sleep and a nightmare. There's a lot of old beech in this woodland, and beech trees tend to drop their branches without warning. With a stiff wind blowing, thinly planted areas like this can be pretty drafty. Here I've got some protection. I have a hill there with thick holly bushes on it. That'll protect me from cold air running down, which will be funneled away from me. And I've got good thick cover here acting as a windbreak. So this, this area actually physically feels warm and it's got that nice snug cosy feel that you'd want for shelter. Interestingly, just up on the slope is also where the badgers have chosen to live, so it can't be a bad residence. It's surprising how little it takes to make the woods feel like home. While there's daylight, I can have a scout around and put in a bigger tap for the birch sap. It should make the beginnings of tomorrow's breakfast. This is one of the rare occasions 
when I don't actually want a piece of wood that's perfectly straight. What I want is that kink because it's got a purpose. This will make a good funnel for the sap and somewhere to hang my billy can at the same time. A layer of cloth stops other bits of the forest falling into the harvest. And this isn't as brutal as it looks. I'll show you why later on. But the sheer quantity of sap is amazing. At this time of year, at the end of winter, when there hasn't been much in the way of green food for a long while, birch sap provides a very welcome drink of both sugar and vitamin C. We know from other parts of northern Europe that that was a really important spring tonic. And modern research has even shown that this sap has cancer healing properties. The average tree could fill this can by the morning and not be damaged by the loss. So if we're lucky, What else is there in early spring in a British forest? Well, it's quiet because the migrant birds are away and only natives like blackbird and robin are singing. It's a good time for spotting early potential too, like this wild garlic, but there's more. Now that's a real surprise. I really wouldn't have expected to see this plant until May. There can be a real benefit in being able to recognize plants before they're in flower and sometimes it even brings rewards. What I found is a pig nut, but it needs careful handling. The stem gets thinner and bends just at the bottom. Now that's only a very small pig nut. They do get sometimes the size of a golf ball. And what you do to eat it, if you just squeeze it between your fingertips, its skin comes away peels away really easy along with it all the grit and soil and you can just eat that raw and they are absolutely delicious. A real spring delicacy. I'm going to use the birch bark to start my fire. You'll notice that this birch bark is very thin, not like the bark that we used to build the birch bark canoe. The warmer the local conditions, the thinner the skin on the birch tree. Here, very thin, too thin to make birch bark canoes. Great pity. Before I light the fire, I'm going to sweep away all the leaves. Always try to go back to bare earth if possible. Much safer. Easier to tidy up. Wherever you are, however remote or wild it may seem, it's still essential to seek permission before you start lighting fires or camping. But it's worth it. The key thing is to be out here with the wild animals, to see how their lives are, to hear their noises in the night, to smell the smells, to feel the season change. Even the smoke from the campfire changes at each season. If I think about one lifetime, maybe we have 80 years if we're lucky. That's not many seasons to be out. If we only come out in the summer, we've missed out on three quarters of a lifetime. There's nothing worse than a poor night's sleep. To be comfortable out here, you need three things. A bivy bag, which is waterproof, windproof, and yet allows your sweat to escape. A good sleeping bag. And underneath you, most important of all, a sleeping mat. This is an inflatable sleeping mat. And by putting it in the bivy bag, 